It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Good Sunday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, broker owner of Realty Executives Preferred Advisors, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. Today, I am here with the infamous Tara Demick. Good morning, Tara. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. It's great to be here. So you guys get to listen to her for this half hour and then again the next half hour. A lot of Tara. I don't know if you're going to be happy about that. (laughs) Uh, So Tara's a really good friend, and I really wanted to get out um, just in case everyone didn't know about her how awesome I think she is, but she has got a lot of irons in the fire. And one of the great big ones is TK Magazine. Obviously, if you read the magazine, you know it's about a lot of the different businesses, and and it's a really great publication. So Tara, let's talk a little bit about how you got started doing it. And um, then we'll, I'll ask you a bunch of more questions. I know I don't really get to talk about that on my own show. I usually talk to everyone else so uh, about their business. But we, you know, this all came about in 2009. So we've been doing it for a while. But um, TK was actually started by Kevin Dole and Jason Hull. They started it back in, I want to say 2005. Might have been six, something like that. At the same time, like 785 started, Topeka Magazine started literally like within a month, month of each other. And, um, you know, when I took it over, my goal was to really tighten the niche of what TK was and to really focus on business. And um, so that's what we do. And uh, the opportunity came to take it over. And I'm one to usually say yes to about everything, uh, which probably gets me in more trouble. But I guess that's why I get to be called infamous um, (laughs) for the good or the bad of it. I, I, especially then, you know, when I was starting my career, I had um, my own my own company. It was a marketing company. We had multiple clients, and TK just became one of those clients was how we treated it. And so it's grown from a 36-page publication to now it's between 80 to 100 pages. We're really proud of that because the bigger it is, the more we get to share about Topeka. And, you know, our focus has been all about how do we tell these wonderful stories about businesses and you know, I think back to '09, and the the biggest hiccup I saw was this big dome over the capital or, or over the capital city. And I remember even people talking about. I haven't heard it for years that that statement that there's this dome over the capital and nothing comes in, nothing goes out. And um, businesses don't. You know, if you can make it in Topeka, you could make it anywhere because that's how hard it is to make it in Topeka. And my perspective was more that. It's just so high government and it's so high conversation of even nonprofits. There's a lot of lobbyists and um, headquarters here for for nonprofits. It just ended up being a hub for those conversations. Then you find out what you really are going to do is HR and uh, book work and all the other things that you never set out to do. And so you have to be a jack of all trades. And, And sometimes you never get to go back to the thing you love the most. Uh, which is why you got it all started. And so, you know, you, you wanted to cook. You never planned to then be also, an editor. Yeah, and, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So so um, I think that's and I, across the board, when you talk to business owners, they they say that they say, you know, if I could tell my younger self or if I could give advice to somebody, what would I tell them that be prepared for all the other things you're going to have to do as a business mm-hmm. owner? And I think the ones that excel are the ones that really start getting on top of their business and start going, okay, you're doing that, and you're doing that, and you're doing that, and finding just really trusted people, because I've had both sides of that coin. And, man, you find somebody who's not a trusted ally, and they can take you down. They can, and unfortunately, they, they want to. Sometimes they do. It does you seem like that. the wrong partner or the wrong employee. Right. Man, that is your culture. That's who you are. And mm-hmm. business owners talk about that, too, all the time. It's, you know, that's that's what goes into it. And And, you know, the other piece of it... And if people have, you know, I, I also know people read, sometimes they don't, sometimes they just look and look at the pictures. But within the stories are things about people, um, especially the heart of like what really goes on. I mean, there's t- been stories where we've talked about uh, business owners who have had to sacrifice their families. And, and it seems so cold mm-hmm. when you say it. But yet at the same time, when you're a business owner, you are birthing a baby. And as a woman who's birthed babies, I'll tell you what, I had a lot more work birth than my business than I did my my babies. Yeah, it doesn't just last for nine months either. It doesn't just last for nine months, and it takes so long to grow it, and you give everything to it. And so it is something that you give your life to. And 
the people around you, man, they really take a beating. Mm -hmm. And you know that, but you're also in the midst of trying to build something. And so I like that part of the story, too. And sometimes for the families to be able to go, okay, so I'm not alone. My husband or wife isn't just leaving me out for no reason. This is this is something they're building and other business owners go through the same thing and so do their families. And how do we work with this? Yeah. So that's the other part. That's probably where my heart is at when it comes to the magazine, you know, growing up in a small business family and, and you know, I, I didn't know that people like work nine to five. Like I, I had no concept of that until the first time I went worked at a job where they said, you have to leave now. And I was like, yeah, but I've got a few things to finish up. And they're like, no, 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 we're closing the building. You have to go. You don't. <laughs> was don't. that last week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it's it's just different when you're on call all the time. It really is. And and being a business owner, um, with mine, I'm a sole business owner. It's me. It's not my husband's. My husband has his own. So it's all on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't want to fail. You know, and and people have this misconception of business owners and owners in general, bosses. We all kind of get this bad label um, that, you know, we don't know what it's like. But we're also the ones that are putting in 80 hours a week and sometimes more. And we're worried if we can't pay you. Oh, yeah. You know, we were we don't when the money isn't coming in, we aren't getting paid. Right. We're making sure that our employees are. Um, And Uh, uh, you you say that across the board. I don't know any business owner that has, at least the the ones I've worked with, that don't pay their employees first. Right. You know, there's all these concepts. Oh, you got to pay yourself first. It's like, no, no, no. I pay my my partners. I pay the people I do work with, our suppliers, and I pay my people. We get and what's then, left over, yes. maybe, yes. if there is any. <laughs> yeah, and there have been significant years where I've gone from having a really great year mm-hmm. to having nothing. Nothing. And thank goodness that, you know, my husband had something to support us during those years and just goes back and forth. Yeah. And that's the same way in our business. Usually whenever I'm I'm getting kind of low in mind, Troy's is picking up. And fortunately, you know, the seasons are kind of different. And, you know, and then again, then there are some years where it's gangbusters and we're like, OK, and we dig our way out. And then we start all over the next year. <laughs> so whenever you look at a business owner, don't look at them and say, well, they don't need my money. Right. They do. Yeah. And, you know, people think, well, your team's doing so great. I, you know, I want to help the small people, you know, the people that are independent. You know, every deal. We want every deal. We don't care what the price of your house is. Yeah. And because we get that, because we Mm -hmm. get every deal, then we're able to grow and employ more people and pay them better money and help their families. You know, Mm -hmm. one of my uh, things, even when we do 20 under 40, um, you know, we're big advocates for, hey, when you're looking at who's going to get 20 under 40, because the Jayhawk Area Council Boy Scouts gets it, it does all that selection, which is we're so grateful for. They do such a great job and uh, it's such a great project to be partnered with. Um, you know, but we're we always advocate. OK, so but when you look at a business owner, they may not be as involved in the community, but how many people are they employing and how many families are here because of that one person who said, I have an idea, let me put my stake in the ground and let's see if we can do this. And so to make sure that they ac- account for that as, in many ways, a community service and a, <clears throat> a building of the community just by the fact of how many people they employ and then the, the families that come with that and are able to go to our schools and build up our community and all the great stuff that happens because of a business owner. Yeah, and business owners are typically the ones that get involved and do all those things. I mean, you know, and you're trying to schedule it into already a crazy schedule. Yeah, what um, do they say? The busiest people are the best people to ask because they know how to fit in a little bit more busy. <laughs> and that and they either just don't know how to say no. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> there's that too. Oh, so let's talk about the magazine. How do you select who goes in? Mm, good question. So so the magazine has been really all about some key areas. So we talk about businesses that are growing. Um, but that doesn't mean that their size is growing. It could be anything, right? They could be employing more people. They could be maybe going global or national. Uh, maybe they have brought a new product in um, that they're now expanding their company. Uh, it, it could be any. Maybe they're just having a big hiring process and they're bringing on 200 more people or, or five Five is big growth, right? If you're a small business, five is huge. Um, so we look at that. And then we look at 
innovation. So are you doing something differently? Are you doing, maybe it's how you do your HR. Maybe it's how you do your marketing. Maybe it's a new product. Maybe you've developed a new product. What are you doing that sets yourself apart from other other people in, in the industry or maybe just to be interesting to Pika? Because that inspires us, right? It's like, oh, that's so cool that they did that. Maybe I should go ahead and do that idea I've been having or go ahead and at least try it. And then kind of on the inspire side, that's where we talk about the heart. And, you know, my hope is that we maybe educate, right? A little bit of educating of the people who, um, you know, you mentioned sometimes business owners get a bad rap. They're just after the money. And I know fully that that's not true. And I don't know that my dad would appreciate it, but I've never seen my dad cry over me, but I have seen him cry because he had to let somebody go. And um, there is nothing more heart-wrenching for a, a business owner to do than to to have to make some really hard decisions because their business is their family. It's their people. Mm-hmm. And so um, so I hope that the Inspire side does two things. It either inspires someone to say, I'm ready. I'm going to be that business owner. I'm going to do that. Well, I guess the third, third thing inspires the business owner that's currently going to be like, I got this. I can do it. I can keep going. And then the other side is just to be inspired by those business owners that maybe they're doing some really cool stuff. And um, I should... I don't know. I I don't want to hold anybody up on a pedestal because I don't believe in that. But give them a breath. Give them a little grace um, that what they're doing may not be what they actually signed up to do and um, to realize that it's a really hard road to hoe. And um, money is just a piece, an element that might happen. But for a lot of them, they They're aren't not. even – they're not even making enough money to – do much more than if they could go, they could make more money if they went and worked for somebody else, most most of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just want to have enough so that they can live the life that they want to live by their own rules. But a lot of people just go into it for that. So the the Inspire piece is the other one, the the lead. So uh, we have these four words on our binding of our magazine, so I'm literally looking at it as I'm talking. But lead comes out of the fact that there's this... Um, I don't know. In the consulting world, there's a a thing I've always heard where if you are just 20 minutes away, you suddenly become an expert, right? So we call up Kansas City, we call up Wichita, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we have experts that know the exact same information right here in Topeka. They went to the same schools. They probably went to better schools, uh, maybe, you know. They're, they're the exact same skill level. I mean, not to mention, we've got Washburn producing all these lawyers, and we just great business people. So why do we keep having to go ask for the expert advice from outside of our community? And every time we do that, we send our dollars outside of our community. So part of the idea behind lead is not necessarily leading the the world or anything like that, but it's, we have the people here. We have the experts here. We have the leadership here. So how do we engage in our own community to make sure that we're not spending those dollars outside if we can choose to use an expert here. So that's kind of like the what goes in, in our minds. And then when we choose our articles, we think about things like, how does somebody want to read the magazine? Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm a poor reader, I'll be honest. Like, I mean, I, I can read, but <laughs> my choice to read is often to read pictures or subheads or so... So I take kind of my own, it's hard for me to read. You have to engage me quickly. I'm probably not going to read about a business if they tell me about the business in a way that's just telling me about the business. But if you tell me about the father and son relationship or the mother and daughter relationship, or you tell me about how they're doing something completely different than anyone else, and then you show me other businesses that are also doing things, it's almost like we we get more interested in the whole story. So I would then be pushed where, so I only care about this one particular business because my friend owns that business or or that's a business I like going to. So I start reading that article, but because the articles are more about the people and the ideas and not just about the bricks and mortar and how they function, my hope is, is that you read about your friend and then you go on to read the other two businesses because the story was good. And um, so we work really hard on with our writers. Our writers are fabulous. Our photographers are fabulous. But we, we talk a lot about how do you engage a reader in something they really want to hear about. 
And so that's that's part of how we do it. That's awesome. And we will be right back after the break to talk more about TK Magazine. This is Stephen Parkin at Invista Credit Union. Purchasing a home is one of the most exciting and important decisions someone can make. Let me tell you why Invista is the best choice for financing your new home purchase. First, quick pre-approval process. Our fast decision-making gives you the power to act quickly and make an offer on your dream home. Second, local servicing. We service your mortgage in-house. You won't get a long-distance runaround, but a committed professional whose only job is to help you. Third, experienced team. We are dedicated to simplifying the process and educating you through the home buying process. Come by in Vista. It's okay to dream. In fact, it's encouraged. We are your home buying partner. Give us a call at 785 228 0149. Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm Agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and Jim Garrison is there for you. Northeast of the roundabout at 29th and Urish. Thanks for joining us again. This is Carrie Brown, broker owner of Realty Executives, Preferred Advisors, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. And I am back with Tara Dimmick. Uh, Tara is the owner of TK Magazine. She actually wears a lot of hats. Yeah. Your title at Invista is what? Um, I'm the Senior Vice President of Business Development. So I've been there for about a year and a half. And so I oversee all the marketing and then I get the good fortune to work with businesses and talk with them about what they need and Um, You know, the reason I really wanted to do this is because I think there's two key areas besides the people part. The people part, I I can't even hardly handle that one. But um, the there's two key areas that a business needs. They need money and they need marketing. They need to be able to sell the product and they need to be able to have money to create their business. And so and build and grow and um, and somebody who's right there behind them supporting that. And so Invista actually was the company that um, the credit union I've been with them for the entire time of my company. And I've always loved them. I've always thought they supported me in a great way. They're very aggressive. Their rates are always top. Um, if they're not the top, I, they have match programs to make sure they're the top. And so I just know I've got a good deal. So when they offered me a position, I I was really excited to join. And it happened to be a good uh, situation for me too, because my marketing company was I'd kind of decreased the number of clients. So it just, it fell in really perfectly and they really support TK. I've got a phenomenal staff with TK Business Magazine. I mean, they are just, they're just amazing. And so they've taken TK and just blown it out of the water. I mean, I, I thought it was good when I was running it. And now that I've got kind of the back seat, they're just, they're doing such a great job. So, so that's, yeah, multiple hats. There's a few more I wear, but those are the two that matter the most. And to plug in Vista, whenever we were looking for inside of my company, I really wanted to have a lender there because with buyers, you know, it's such an intimidating process to sit down with a lender. You're always scared of what the answer is going to be. And I felt like, you know, if you, if it felt like home, mm-hmm. I felt like they were sitting there and they were able to, to have a conversation with them. We're a very relaxed office um, that that would make it easier. And in Vista was the only one that would take a chance. They weren't scared of being pigeonholed. Well, you know, if I'm in Realty Executive's office and I'm working with Carrie Brown and her team, you know, I may not get business somewhere else, whereas it's not true. I mean, there are some products that we have to go outside of, and he's created a really good relationship with those lenders. But I can't be, I couldn't possibly be any more grateful to Invista and Stephen for coming over and being in our office. He's there every day. Um except for the weekends, but still, <laughs> you know, we always know we can get a hold of him and he's so gracious and so kind and, and I love yes. Invista. Steven is pretty phenomenal. So, uh, Steven's been with Invista for quite a while and, um, he works in our, our mortgage department. And so when this kind of conversation started, it was this opportunity for really him to grow. What does it look like to really run, a, um, this mortgage department? And he has been, fabulous and he's mm-hmm. loved every second of it and it's been an opportunity to really say I, I don't I, I can't even explain how good it's been for for us and for him as well just to be able to go 
this is a good fit and it's very welcoming to the the person who's buying a house because there's I'm I, maybe it's just me I mean I know I run a business and all those things but there's nothing more stressful than buying a house in my world there's not yeah <laughs> Braden asked me my husband asked me he goes um I really want to get a new house and I said um well then have a nice move cuz I'm not leaving <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what this means for us moving forward, but I'm literally never leaving this house. So you go do that. <laughs> and it's not going to help that he's actually, he's just starting to sell real estate with my team yeah. and he's going to be a listing agent for the team. And uh, so he's going to be going in and out of a lot of houses. We may have to all physically go pack Tara if that should happen. Oh yeah. You know, it ain't can't. happening. <laughs> it will not happen. Maybe a remodel. Them. We'll introduce you to a remodeler. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about who's in the magazine this month. So this issue has been, uh, it's a great issue. I love it. You know, one of the things we get to do uh, each year is work with Junior Achievement and the Hall of Fame. Um, so they do the Business Hall of Fame each year, and it's a phenomenal group of of selection. Every year it is. Um, the laureates are just absolutely outstanding. And, you know, one of the best parts is we get really get to hear their story and what they've done over a period of time. And so we get to highlight um, we, we highlight those those five, five individuals. Um, the cover has four because Phil has passed away. And so that, that's a great piece. We also talk about rebranding. Uh, we, we get into the world of farm to table, which is, is really popular right now. I mean, we've got Row House, which is outstanding, and now White Linen. And they all look at that process of how do we grow our own foods? How do we bring local foods? How do we engage the local farmers so that those foods can be popular? And then in that process, we got to talk with um, other farmers, and they were talking about how popular, you know, it used to be you kind of brought your leftovers to the farmer's market, and now that's totally switched. Now you bring your best to the farmer's market because that's what's selling is is, um, the produce. People want that local produce. All in the Family is is a great one. I think I kind of referred to it when I was talking earlier. I just love the stories of um, the family businesses. I I grew up in a, a business that is now in the process of figuring out a transition within the family. And you've got so many dynamics when you have a family business that become so much more complicated. And so when you make a transition, whew, it doesn't get any worse than that. Uh, or any better. And I think that's what the story tells with All in the Family is is each one of these is a, 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 a child and a, a parent. Actually, one of them is, is a grandparent to a child. And what they did to make that sm- as smooth as possible. Um, Jet Service talks about how basically it was a five-year process and, and very methodical and thought out and many, many meetings over that process. And the same thing kind of went with uh, Barbara's Conservatory of Dance. You know, they they met, they made plans, they sent her off for education and training, and, you know, they've built their business on her, but yet without the, the idea of Lacey having to be so forced into the business that she couldn't say no and opening that door to say, it's okay if you say no. And I think we can learn from those stories because it's just hard work. Um. Also in this issue, there's just a phenomenal article. Um, Washburn partners with us. They're another great partner. Each issue, we talk with one of the professors. This one, we we get to talk economics and what's going on with the market. Heart of the Entrepreneur is with Soho Interiors and Studio Furniture. And, you know, this is one of those ones where you're like, I've driven by this building a bazillion times and I don't know who's connected to it. And that's Studio Furniture. So if you've ever driven by Target or the mobile home area that's out there by Forbes Field. You kind of you, you drive by this building and it says Studio Furniture. For me, I was like, okay, what is that? And it's gone through all these transitions over the years. And so it's just that fascinating story of like a business evolving and evolving and evolving and then growing. And you've got this new location and you don't even realize the two are connected. And I just, again, family business, multiple generations are involved. And what they've done to stay here and stay in Topeka. Uh, we talk about some boutiques in Topeka. That's become very popular, and hopefully it just continues to grow. And FHL Bank, right? They're having this massive anniversary. They're building this huge, gorgeous building, which is now built. They're moved into it. And what they were thinking when they were building that building, what, what thought processes went into the design. I think, you know, we all want to grow up and be something bigger. And 
um, learning from others who have to go through the pain and they can pay someone <laughs> to go through that pain and go through those thought processes of are we going to put offices, are we going to put collaborative space? Then you can start thinking about for your smaller business, how do I be like them but not necessarily have to do all that extra work? So that it's uh, it's packed full. And there's a cow right on the inside cover. <laughs> I know. It's great. That's that whole farm to table. We we actually didn't have a spot for the cow. Uh, J.D. Melton did that. And uh, he, he, we the picture got submitted, and we loved it so much. We were like, I don't know where it's going, but we got to find a picture for the cow. Like, it almost made the cover. He is a cool cow. It is a cool cow. It, it was just such a great shot. Like, licking it. It's just awesome. <laughs> So it's on the table of contents, so we couldn't find any. We were actually going to make it the whole table of contents page, but we decided maybe people would want to know what the, the table of contents were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was almost famous. He's he still kind of cool. A though. little bit. A yeah. Little bit. Um, so whenever it comes into advertising, and how, how do you guys get um, what it takes to, to pay to get this done? Yeah, so advertising is, um, we really consider them our partners. There's some people who have been with us since 2009. Like I remember when I took over the magazine and talking with them, I, they were the ones that believed in us, right? They said, I don't know who you are or what you think you're going to do, but I'll buy in. I'll bet on you one more time, you know, as we took it over. And um, those people still have the same rates that they had back in 2009 because they're, it's just something we've always done. We believe in our partners and we believe in the people that back us. And so it, even when we have to just have rate changes due to the whatever, all the wonderful excuses there are. If I if I didn't have to have rate changes, I never would. I got to tell you, I I just keep it nice and easy. But um, those partners stay in with us forever, and it's just something we believe. So people buy qu- quarterly. They do all kinds of stuff. They work with Braden. Braden's my husband. He's also does real estate for Carrie. He's pretty well uh, spent over across multiple things as well. But um, we sell out every issue, and so. We have a certain amount of advertising we will put in. Um, we believe that the magazine should be more content heavy, and that is for our advertising partners. We believe that it should be them that get seen, and we want people to know who made this magazine happen. The only reason the magazine happens is because of the advertisers. I mean, I, I, I can own this all day long, but it ain't happening unless we have those advertising partners that say we want in. And so the magazine's free. It goes out to... Uh, over 600 drop locations to different businesses. It's out at Westridge Mall and Dillon's and hy V, And so all of those advertising partners are make that happen. Um, so as far as advertising goes, we've got information on our website. It's at TK... No, it's not. It's TKMagazine.com. Um, and and you can go and look into advertising. You can contact Braden there. Uh, he's just Braden at TKMagazine.com if you want to email him. But it's a, we really do consider that a partnership, and it's really important to us that we take good care of our advertising partners and that they do well. Um, we look for ways to even think about like, okay, so you're selling this widget or this service, and so we know that you need to be by this other advertiser or this other article because we want to make sure that the people who are reading this article see you. So we pay attention to those kinds of things, even as we're placing the magazine at the very end of the, you know, right before we go to print, we'll ask those questions. Is it done right? Would they be happy with their placement? Uh, are we trying to partner them up as much as we can? We can't always do it, but we try uh, really hard to make sure that happens. So thank you so much, Tara, for joining me on the show today. It was awesome. TK Magazine is definitely something you want to pick up. Anytime you see one, grab it. It's definitely worth the read. And if you're looking to buy or sell a home, be sure and check out our website, nekansashomes.com. You can see anything from actually the Kansas, Missouri area, all the way out to Junction City, all the way up practically to the Nebraska border and down to Emporia, a little further below. So we have just about everything on there. We are on forum losses, and uh, we would be happy to help you. If you want to buy, give us a call at 785-213-5188. Thanks for joining us on Real Estate 101. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Tune in again next Sunday at 11 o'clock for Real Estate 101.